G'day guys, welcome back. In this week's video, we're checking out this ultra portable and lightweight travel router. Now this is super small to fit in your airplane luggage and you wouldn't even notice that it's there. What it provides you though is a private network when you're away from home. You can run a VPN on this guy and know that your data is more secure than using a standard hotel Wi-Fi. But because you've got a private network, you can also set up a Chromecast. So you can have your Netflix, your Disney Plus, all streaming from your phone or laptop in your hotel space, which is pretty awesome. Now make sure you stick around to the end of today's video because I'm gonna show you a setting to change on this router, but also your home router that's gonna increase your internet speed. It's a super simple setting, but it makes a big world of difference. So let's get into it. So first off, we get to get started guide. Pretty simple, tells you how to connect to the Wi-Fi router. Type your username and password in, makes sense. You get a RJ45 LAN cable. This is just your traditional for plugging into your laptop. You also get a micro USB cable. So that's for connecting the device to power because it does obviously need power. And here is the device itself. Oof, it is so small. There's a business card, that's the router. It is the same height as a business card. It won't fit in your wallet because it's a little bit thicker, but that's not, that's not bad, that's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna set the router now. I'm gonna go through what the multiple LAN connections mean, what the USB port does, and also just how to set up Wi Fi if you've got no LAN to plug into. To get started, plug in this power cable to a 5 volt 1 amp port. Now, most smartphone chargers are this, and also power banks are able to power the device. Next up, I wanna take a LAN connection from the wall and plug it straight into the router's WAN port. Now this is wide area network, and it means that it's going to be taking a network that already exists and then reproducing it. The LAN connection is then gonna be plugged into my computer. With the router now on and some devices connected, we can configure it via the admin portal. Okay, so on your computer, you're gonna type in 192.168.8.1 into your web address bar. Now this is a reserved IP address by the router itself and it will present you with the admin login page. Enter in the password that comes in the manual and log in. Now here you can see my custom SSID of Quickie Mart Wi-Fi that I've set up myself. You can see here that we're currently plugged in via a cable and we have one Wi-Fi connection. We also have one LAN connection, that's going to be my computer. So as far as my computer is concerned, it's just plugged into a home router. It doesn't really know that it's actually two steps away from my real home router being passed through this guy. It just knows that it's getting internet and this is a network it's attached to. Now, I did say there's a USB port on the side of the device and that is where these two come in hand. If we scroll down here, you can see that there's currently no tethering device plugged in from our smartphone or USB modems. So you can actually plug in your phone to this device and tether via the USB hardwired connection out to any other devices connected to this smart router. Now you can currently see this VPN shield is currently disabled. We'll get into that in just a moment because we're gonna set up Wi-Fi on this router. So if you were to log in and you didn't have a LAN cable plugged in, let me just pull that out now you're going to see that that connection method will drop. There we go, it's now disabled. So we currently have a Wi-Fi client, that's the Chromecast, still active, and my computer is still active. However, there's nothing coming in, there's no internet. We've lost internet connection on the PC. If we open up a new tab, try to go to google.com, we're not gonna get anything. There's nothing there. We can start playing the little hidden game, tap spacebar, and that lets you play the game with the dinosaur, but there's nothing going on. And I could, I could literally play this all day. Um, okay, so back to the vid. But here we have our Wi-Fi option, that's repeater. And down here you got the option to scan. So click scan and it's gonna go through and find what Wi-Fi networks are around. Once it gives you the list, you can then pick from the SSID options what you wanna to connect to. Now this is just going to show the two and a half gigahertz options because this is their cheapest router model. However, if you want five gigahertz, I'll link in the description below their top tier model. However, if you're traveling and just browsing the web, watching Netflix, this will do the trick. Here at my house, we have the LAN down under. Once I've typed in my password, I can click join. 
This is now going to connect this router to my home router and it's going to act as if it's just a normal device. It's going to say, hey, I'm a mobile phone. Can I please connect? Once it's connected, it's then going to again create its own little portable network and start middlemaning that Wi-Fi connection. You can now see that the network that we're connected to is my the LAN down under. And that's going to be passing the internet through to our wireless and LAN devices. So let's try go to Google again. And there you go. We're now on the internet. Now in the scenario of traveling, you would have connected to the router in your hotel room. You'd have selected the name, typed in the password that they've given you. And if they didn't give you a password, you most likely have a captive portal. Those are those ones where you have to type in like your room number and your last name or like at Macca's or an airport, you just have to tick agree and continue. I'll link in the description below some steps you can do to get through those. Okay, so what's the next step now after we've authenticated with the router? Well, you can use it now. You've created a private network. You can set up a Chromecast, begin streaming your Disney Plus and Netflix, and you can enjoy knowing you've added a little step of privacy from your devices, especially if the network you connected to had no password, your new network does. However, what if you're traveling in a country that you don't really know their laws, like how the government manage the internet privacy, and also what rules internet providers over there are held to? Well, that's where the virtual private network comes in, known as a VPN. On your main portal, you're gonna see that there's a VPN shield. At the moment, it's saying it's turned off. We're gonna go to VPN option on the side and go to the Open VPN client. This is absolutely fantastic because it allows you to connect to the virtual private network over your entire private network whilst traveling. I personally use private internet access known as PIA. Uh, they're super fast and I've had no issues. I'll link them down below if you need a VPN. But if you log into their website, they actually give you an open VPN config zip file. They give you all of the server details for anywhere in the world and it allows you to drag it into this admin portal. It'll then give you a server list of all of the countries and cities that you can connect to. Once you've selected the server, you can then connect. Now it has a kill switch built in, which is fantastic. That means that if the VPN cannot connect, it will kill the internet connection on the network. So if you were doing something important, say checking your bank details, it will then straight away disconnect from their servers and say, hey, we're started routing through the main internet line and not through your virtual private network. Now, one thing to bear in mind with the VPN is that some streaming services will actually block you. I wasn't able to use Disney Plus or Netflix whilst connected to the PIA VPN because Netflix probably has in their database that that's what I'm doing, therefore block it all together. Now to make things easier on yourself, you can go into more settings down to button settings and actually set up this switch button to be your VPN client toggle. So it's gonna let you know that if it's on the left hand side, the VPN is on. And if it's on the right hand side, the VPN has been turned off. It allows you just walk up to the router and say, hey, I'm gonna do some banking, switch it to the left. And I'm gonna do some streaming, switch it to the right. Simple as that. Now I did say there's going to be a tip in today's video on speeding up the internet of the travel router and your home router, and that is custom DNS. Now if you've never heard of DNS before, it is domain name system. Every time you search facebook.com, a server will connect you with the IP address of that web server. So when you do a Google search and you click through 10 different results, Every time you click a result, it's doing a lookup, a domain name search, and connecting you to the servers. Not all ISPs have a DNS server that's created equally. Some are very slow and some are quite fast. However, we can change the server that the router is looking for. We can tell it a specific one that you want to use for every search that you do. So here on the screen under more settings, we have custom DNS server. And here I've inputted Cisco's Open DNS. So if you're Australian, these are great numbers to enter. However, if you're American, you can actually search for Google DNS and they give out their servers publicly, which is just 8888 and 8844. It's crazy how much this simple change can speed up your internet whilst traveling or at home. Just remember to search your model number of your router and custom DNS to find out how to do it for your home network. Leave a comment below the like button if you've got any questions about today's travel router. Uh, Norman is getting a little bit bigger since you last saw him and you'll also notice that our couch is new. We've actually upgraded the outro couch. Well, it's the living room couch in our house, but as you know on the YouTube channel, this is where we do our outros. This video is coming up here and here for you to pick and we'll catch you next week. See ya. <laughs> oh, dude, you're so tired. These dudes have been sleeping all day. You're a little schnoozer. Oh, thanks for the nose kiss. Oh, thank you.